So when I got up this morning and I thought about what should I film today and I was kind of like blank on ideas. I'm like scrolling through the files in my brain of things that I want to film and then I was like, oh yeah, there was something that I wanted to talk about from the retreat I went to last weekend. So I went to this retreat called Healing the Whole Person. I didn't really stay for as much of it as I wanted to because I was just very, very like, uh, tired and a lot of the events were like back to back or the talks were back to back and sitting for a very long time just not my speed so i didn't stay for as long as i wanted to but i went to a couple of the talks and um so this was a retreat read, led by father john burns who i love so much he is amazing and by the way let me tell you a funny story about him before i get on the story so on Thursday night is when my friend and I arrived and we checked into our hotel and we went to the church to do registration and to um, hear the first set of talks. So when we arrived at the church, Father John Burns is there and he's giving a talk and that was pretty short lived because we got there a little bit late. So he ended up kind of finishing up his talk as we were arriving and going and doing his own thing. But there was a moment in the retreat after a couple other talks where there was like a break, right? And everybody was getting up and talking to other people. Now, I <laughs> was wandering around trying to find Father John Burns. And I was going, I went over to the place that he was sitting and he wasn't there, um, which I kind of, you know, wasn't really sh shocked by because he's probably busy doing something else. But I walk up um, to the place that he's sitting and I look, I see this nun that's in, you know, a Sisters of Life uniform. And I'm like, is that Sister Miriam? And so I go up closer and I'm like, oh my gosh, it is. But she was talking to somebody. So she didn't really notice me because she was talking one-on-one -on -one with somebody. I don't know who, but anyways, I was like, oh, she's not there. So then I end up seeing one of my friends and I'm like, and this friend is actually helping out with the event. So I'm like, hey, can uh, you locate Father John Burns for me so I can go say hi and introduce myself? Well, uh, we're both trying to find him. Like we're both kind of wandering around and then I look straight ahead and I see him and I'm like, oh, there he is. So I go over there and I'm just like a little like hesitant, I guess, cause he's talking to people. So I don't want to like come up and interrupt and be like, hi, nice to meet you. Because you know, that would be kind of rude, but I see him and then eventually he stops talking to those people and he's just like kind of like wandering around and I think he was getting ready for Eucharistic adoration. So I saw him and I was like kind of like staring at him. It was like a fangirl type of a thing, but I was like, oh, I'm so like nervous to like walk up and say hi. So I didn't end up saying hi. I didn't end up meeting him this entire weekend, which was unfortunate. Although there was one time where I went to confession and there were 15 priests there. So the likelihood of me getting Father John Burns was like next to nothing. I don't even know if he was hearing confessions probably. But anyway, I didn't end up getting Father John Burns for my priests, which was sad because I had this scapular that I really, really, really wanted Father John Burns to bless. But I ended up just doing or having the priest that was hearing my confession bless the scapular. So... I'll get to this in a, in a second, but on with the main story. I just had to go on that little tangent. Um, during the retreat, I felt convicted about something and there were just certain things that were coming to my mind as the speakers were speaking. So I have this little like booklet that they encourage you to take notes in. Now, some people took notes in this and some people just took notes in like, you know, their regular journals. So. I just wanted to look through this just to make sure I wasn't like leaving anything out of this video that I wanted to share. And they really asked you or when they really asked me deep down to like examine myself and see like what are my wounds? What are areas that I have been hurt and areas that I need healing still? So some things I wrote down are not having a parental figure that I could trust. And that's something that's always been a wound of mine is to feel like I can't trust my parental figures. I can't trust the people who were supposed to be there for me the most. And that has always been such a cross. And another thing is self-blame for their lack of love and empathy towards me, which is really, really hard too, because that is nowhere near my fault at all. 
And yet somehow I still continue to be like, well, what could I have done to have made them do this? And again, like, even though everything in me is like, you did nothing, you did absolutely nothing. It was totally their fault. Another wound that was really like brought to my attention is trying to overcompensate for what I'm lacking. And oh man, this is, this is hard to talk about. I feel like throughout the past few years or so, and maybe, I don't know, maybe I could be just being too hard on myself. I'm not sure. I will, uh, I would have to ask Jesus himself, but I can't do that. <sighs> throughout the past few years or so, there have been wounds inside of me, right? And I feel like I've tried to heal those wounds by excessive spending or just trying to like look a certain way, trying to be a certain way to compensate for what I'm lacking. And that's, yeah, that's hard. That was a hard realization for me because I never want material possessions to be the most important thing in my life. Obviously the most important thing to me is God. And sometimes I, I don't show my appreciation for God in the way that I should. And that's hard for me to come to terms with. Something that's sticking out to me as I'm reading through like their notes that they put on here is God's very being is love. He is love itself. There is an encapsulation of what love is. It's God. And we, when we die and hopefully go to heaven or purgatory, but when we get out of purgatory and go to heaven, we will be in the presence of love itself. And that is, oh, that's such a humbling and sobering thought. Because our world defines love in other ways. When it comes to the perfect encapsulation of what love is, when it comes to the very essence of love, it is God. At the fall, and this is something that they've highlighted, at the fall, we experienced, it. we experienced five broken communions. So between us and God, first and foremost, spiritual. Between us and others, social. Within us, mind and heart, psychological. Within us, body and soul, physical. Between us and nature, ecological. I kind of wrote beside these things my brokenness and my the way that I feel like these particular things have affected me. So between us and God, spiritual. So I wrote down not trusting him with my whole life. Between us and others, social. And I wrote not feeling accepted and loved by the people around me at times. Within us, mind and heart, psychological, I wrote overthinking because I tend to overthink a lot. In us, body and soul, physical. So I wrote here the myriad of symptoms that I experience as a result of my brokenness within my body. These are things I'm working on because I don't believe I'm doomed to just stay where I'm at. I believe that I'm able to have a really, really good life and I'm able to overcome these things by changing my mind. Now, that's a whole nother video, but yeah, that is something that I wrote down here. Between us and nature, ecological. Now, the first thing I thought of when I thought of this is factory farming, the way that we treat animals so that we can fulfill our gluttonous desires and think that the impact of that is so, such on like, this is the brokenness, I feel like, and the result of the fall that isn't talked about quite as much. People don't pay as much attention to this kind of brokenness as they do to the other kinds of brokenness. And that's something that's really, really sad to me because animal welfare is something that I feel really sad about and just, it hurts my heart every time I think about it. So I'm working very, very hard to make other people aware of the this type of brokenness specifically. So there's another thing though that I feel I was really convicted of at this retreat. And it was something that was so heartbreaking to me to realize because this is something that I, oh man, there's just like, there's certain cycles that I just don't want to repeat, right? And I think when it comes to negative cycles, like let's say generational trauma of abuse, of hitting children, 
of yelling, of screaming, of losing your temper, of not being emotionally regulated. Those things are negative generational cycles. But we can't just get rid of those. We have to replace it with something else, right? The generational cycle that I want to replace those things with is just as powerful, at, if not more powerful, in my opinion, than the negative things. Because I believe that good always defeats evil. So if I replace those things that I just mentioned with emotionally regulated parenting, meeting your child's emotional, psychological, physical needs, being there for your child, being loving towards your child, being a listening ear, being somebody that they can come to no matter what, being that good parental figure, that Christ-like parental figure, those things are just as powerful and those cycles are just as powerful as the negative cycles. So I want to create cycles of the things I just mentioned, love, kindness, empathy, and I want those things to echo throughout the generations of humans that I hopefully, God willing, will create someday. Or if not, I will adopt them. I will have kids no matter what. There's this negative cycle though that I realized I'm repeating from my parents. And that is the cycle of being like too harsh with my words or being too stubborn about things. And when I realized this, I'm like, oh, fridge. That, that sucks. I really wanted in my life, and I still do, to be the person in my family that broke those cycles. And that chose something different for my life. And when I realized, like, shoot, I could be repeating these things, it, it really just hurt my heart quite a bit. And I was convicted of this at this retreat, and it made me really, really sad. Because I realize I, you know, like, I have a sailor mouth and I cuss a lot, especially if I'm angry about something. And I can be very combative in my opinions about things. And I don't think it's wrong to have strong convictions about things, but I think that when they stop you from being able to engage with others, being able to sit at the table with other people who have differing opinions than you about certain things it's that's when it becomes a problem the number one theme that was at this retreat the number one thing that i heard the speaker saying is communion with god is always the ultimate goal that is such a hard thing for me to work towards and i will admit that i'm lazy i tend to neglect prayer a lot. I tend to just kind of dwell in my own, my own shit, you know? And I've realized that I really need to start investing in self-care. And I'm not talking about, I know when, when I say that it sounds like, or it translates to spending a ton of money on like face masks and hair masks and like, no, that's not what I'm talking about in this particular instance. And by the way, I'm sorry, the wind is kind of going crazy and my roof is a little loose. I'm sorry if you hear that outside. In this particular instance though, I'm talking about meditation specifically because I remember practicing meditation and I would just feel amazing afterwards. If you can really just like tune into your body and, and like tune into what you're feeling, then I think it's just such a good way to kind of declutter your mind, to stop the overthinking, and to just really improve your mental health. And so I'm talking in this specific instance about investing in time, investing time into laying down and doing a meditation on YouTube. It's really healing, if I'm being honest, because you have the opportunity to just kind of reset your brain a little bit to kind of like set the tone for what your day is going to be like for what your week is going to be like and I really need to invest in this stuff so I hope this video was inspiring to you in some way this was such a good retreat weekend and while I'm uh, I'm sad that I missed a lot of it I just wanted to yeah offer some wisdom so I will see you guys in my next video